different types of, what is it, like milkweed that has the white flowers that grow on it. There's another type of kind of thistly weed that grows yellow flowers. And then there's just additionally like a bunch of uh, cool stretches of fields of wildflowers that are out there that kind of grow interspersed uh, across um, across these fields. Uh, and specifically, I think I photographed them before, talked about it probably every year, the, uh, the foxglove are in bloom this time of year, which is really cool. So you can go around uh, to just about any hillside in Oregon and you're going to see these really cool stalks of the stock with this, you know, kind of clumped pattern of bright purple magenta flowers that are sort of budded off of it. And you'll see them everywhere in in this part of Oregon for sure. I mean, gosh, like anywhere from, I think it would be like Roseburg to Seattle probably. <laughs> I don't know if it goes that far, but uh, I don't know if I really saw them a lot in southern Oregon. Uh, just wild on the hillsides during the summertime. There's there's probably a bit out there right now, but really uh, this this area of the Willamette Valley and up into parts of the Cascades before it gets too high in elevation, you see a lot of that out there. Anywhere that there seem to be uh, like uh, logging activity, you know, where there's uh, there's some down trees, there's an uh, open field of grass, you know, it kind of interspersed, and then uh, and it and some sunlight that's able to get through to the, the bottom of the forest floor. And it seems like there's these, uh, these rows of foxglove that kind of come in. Maybe they were invasive. I'm not sure how they, they really came through. I mean, they must've been like tracked in somewhere. I see them, I see them spilled out by roadsides all over. Uh, so it makes me wonder sometimes, but, uh, but yeah, beautiful flowers, really cool. And, uh, and the way that they bloom for probably the next three weeks is, is really one of the, the natural highlights of, of taking photographs in Oregon or, or of going out and looking at stuff in Oregon. It's really uh, just one of the uh, nicer bits of the year when you can go out and you can find cool, bright flowers just about anywhere that you kind of head out to. Um, so, yeah, I've always appreciated kind of going out and trying to get some photographs of that this time of year. I noticed that a little bit in Oregon specifically, probably anywhere that you photograph stuff, is that there's sort of a seasonality to some things where there's a two-week period of the year where a certain idea is just going to work better than other periods of the year. I know you can travel around and do different things. You can be dynamic, but uh, but, but really kind of thinking of it, like, okay, what, what am I offered during this period of time that the year provides me? So, you know, in the wintertime, just kind of obtusely, you could think, uh, well, you get snow in the wintertime, and in the summer you get sun, I guess, or in the fall you get colored leaves, um, which is, I guess it's a, that's a pretty easy one to understand. But even that, you, you kind of get the t- into the dynamics of, taking photographs in the fall and if you were to think about the the crisp kind of bright look of early october before everything gets real wet or before the leaves really drop that's when you're able to get a lot of the the crisp uh, like kind of vibrant color and mix of colors where you get like the greens the oranges the yellows and the reds uh, sort of spread through the different trees in the area, you get that kind of late September, early October, but by November, still the fall, you get a lot of stuff that, that just looks like it's, you know, the 